Father, I thank you that tonight I'm speaking with the tongue of the learned. Your word in season. Thank you, Father, that you are speaking to us. Father, synchronize me, mighty God. Right now, with your now word, let me not speak my mind. Let me not speak what I think is right. Only your word and your will, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's another night. It's another wonderful night. We are fasting and praying. Push prayer until something happens. And I want to put it to you. Something is happening. Hallelujah. Something is happening. I want to welcome all those who are watching me through different forms of media. Those who are on YouTube and Facebook. Be greeted in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you to take the notes. I encourage you to have future reference in the means of taking notes. Hallelujah. Psalms 139 verse 16 we are still on the topic of the ministry of the word and prayer. Psalm 139 verse 16. Psalm 139 verse 16. If you are there, say shalom. You are there already. Okay, I'm not yet there. Psalm 139 verse 16. He said, use your eyes saw my substance, yet unformed. And in your book, they are all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Let us read it in Amplified. Psalm 139 verse 16 in Amplified. It says, uh, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape. When as yet, there was none of them. David is talking to God. He's saying something so profound through the revelation of the Holy Spirit that there is a book about his life written in heaven. All the days concerning him are recorded. He said, before he was born, the days concerning him were already recorded in the book. Before we were born, the days concerning our lives were already recorded in the book. Meaning, your life is written your days has been fashioned already before they manifest. So if God has already prearranged our lives, why do we suffer? Why do we get shortchanged? Why do we miss our breakthroughs? That is where the ministry of the word and prayer comes in. You saw this first says, God wrote down my substance and my days in a book. You see, God is writing down everything that he saw about you. 
Remember to God, there is no yesterday. There is no today, there is no tomorrow. To God is always now. So, everything concerning you has been prophetically uttered. Meaning, there are words in the spiritual realm concerning your life. Because the book that you are talking about is not a physical book. It's a spiritual book. You can only relate with that book through your spirit man. You can only attach your life to what has been preordained about you through your spirit man. In other ways, we need to know that this book, the spirituality has the ability to speak to your DNA. Am I talking to someone tonight? So what do we do? What do we do when things are like this? You know, one thing that I love about the Bible, the Bible didn't say the years fashioned before me. He said, in your book, all the days were written before they ever took shape. Not the weeks. Not the month. Not the years. Meaning, every day concerning you matters to God. Hallelujah. You may measure your life in weeks. You may celebrate your birthday is your birthday in years. I want to put it to you that when God speaks about the days, he's speaking about every millisecond, every second of your life matters to God. Hence, he fashioned it. Hence, everything has been pre prophetically preordained for you to walk in. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God has preordained that we should walk in. So, he's speaking to Psalm 139 verse 16. So, that is where the ministry of the word and the prayer comes in. Hallelujah. You must know that when you pray, you are contending with someone who's opposing that which he already knows about you. You cannot afford to pray your thoughts. You cannot afford to pray fancy ways. We pray the word written in the Bible concerning us. Am I talking to someone tonight? If, 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 if we can go to Daniel uh, 7 verse 25 to 26. It talks about Satan. He said, he shall speak prompt words against the most high God. He shall persecute the saints of the most high. Talking about me and you. Then the sins shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. But the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy forever. So I don't want us to look at the court. I'll teach about you one day. I'll teach about the court of heaven one day. But I want you to focus that there is someone every day who is intending to hijack the times fashioned for you. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. The Bible said, he shall speak pompous words. He shall persecute the saints of the most high God. The main purpose of Satan is to disrupt God's timing concerning your life. And it is your responsibility to fight back through the word. You know, as I told you that I was not supposed to be standing here. There was a major disruption. Disrupting the timing and the purpose of God for my life. And the moment I started declaring the word, the moment I started declaring that we overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony, God's timing was restored. And his purpose was restored concerning my life. So you must know that the disruptions that you see in your life 
The unfortunate circumstances that you see in your life, their main purpose is one, to disrupt that which has been fashioned concerning you. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let us go to Revelation 12. 10. I, I, I want you, to, I, I want you to, 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 to walk with me here. Revelation 12, verse 10 to 11. My apology, I said 10. Revelation 12, verse 10 to 11 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Check in. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. What does this mean? We overcame Satan. The blood of the lamb is representing the finished works of Calvary. When you pray pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. You are saying by the life of Jesus Christ. Who wrote and fashioned my life. I'm contending with you Satan. You cannot disrupt God's timing concerning my life. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know how to respond back. Praying the word of God. When they, because many people just say pray the word of God. But they don't understand that when you pray the word of God, you are saying God, I, mean, I am in agreement with you with what has been fashioned for me about me in the book of life. You fashion that through your word. I am praying your word because it is your word that has released the plans for my life. When I release your word, I'm saying let the plans of, for you, for the plans that you have ordained for my life, prevail over the plans of the accuser. Hallelujah. Hence the importance of the ministry of the word in prayer. We are not just praying the word. You are walking in the preordained steps concerning your life. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? What does the blood do? Every disruption, every disruption that the enemy has caused concerning God's timing and purpose for your life, as it is written in the volume of books, get restored. Only the blood, but the Bible doesn't say only, only the, with the blood, but with the word of our testimony, meaning our declaration of the word of God concerning our lives, counter every negative declaration from the kingdom of darkness. When you pray declaring the word of God, you are countering Every negative, it doesn't matter how strong, how strong those witches and wizards are. The moment you release the word of God, backed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are an overcomer. The time for being a victim is over. The time for feeling, for feeling pity about yourself is over. Hallelujah. Do you understand how the blood works? Let me put this to you. Hebrews 12, 24. Go there. Hebrews 12, 24 says, We have come to the blood that speaks. We must say to the mediator, to Jesus, the mediator of, new, of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling, that speaks better things than that of Abel. Nothing, no, not here. Notice the blood of Jesus is speaking better things than Abel's blood spoke. So you must understand what was the language of Abel's blood. Abel's blood spoke what? Vengeance. Abel's blood spoke what? Curses. So that's the reason why today, when the enemy wants to accuse you, 
through vengeance and cases. What do you do? You raise the flag of the blood of Jesus Christ. You go to Hebrews 12, 24. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ silence every word released to disrupt God's timing concerning the days of my life. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are we together? You are more than a conqueror. You are more than the conqueror. You, you are not an accident here on earth. Irrespective of the circumstances and the position and everything that you may be in life, I want you to know that there is a book concerning you. And only you can contend and prevent the disruption that, that, that Satan wants, 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 wants to implement against you. Say, say, say I'm an overcomer. Say, say I'm an overcomer. So what, what do you do? What do you do? When you go, when you declare the word of God, there are things that happen. One, the word increases your faith. Because you can only walk in what God has designed for you through faith. Am I talking to someone? So every new, the more you walk, listen to me, the more you walk, through the word of God, by the word of God, you are always getting new insight of revelation. So as you pray, based on the new insight of revelation, what do you do? Your faith grows. As your faith grows, you, start, you begin to walk in that which has been preordained for you. Who am I talking to this evening? Can you go to Romans 10? We're going to read a lot of Bible tonight. We're going to read a lot of Bible tonight because we need, we need to understand that prayer without the word of God is ineffective. Romans 10, verse 8 and 17. He said... Uh, but what I say, the word, God's message in Christ, is near you on your lips, in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis and the object of the faith we preach. Where should the word be? Near you, on your lips, in your heart. What do you do? When you release that word, okay, I've, I've read it in, in Amplified. In New King James, it but the word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. Hallelujah. Establish yourself in faith by praying the word of God. Am I talking to someone tonight? Say, say, say I'm, est I'm established in faith by releasing the word of God. Say my faith prevent the disruption of God's timing concerning my life. So when you get the word of God, new levels of faith rise up. You begin to work in what? In new revelation. What, what, that's, why, that's why the prophet Isaiah said, when the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up the standard against him. So when you walk by new levels of faith, you are lifting up the standard against the enemy. What has been written about you in the volume of books prevails. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. And also when you spray the word, the word builds strength until you write it down. 
The words build strength. You cannot be weak if you are full of the word of God. It's not possible. You cannot be weak. I want to tell you that the reason why the, the biggest at attack of Christians by Satan is against reading the Bible. Many Christians don't read the Bible because the enemy knows that if they are wedded, if they are filled with the word, the moment they kneel down and begin to pray, they'll be shooting arrows with their mouth. He's finished with his kingdom. That's the reason why if you are lazy to read your Bible, the enemy knows that that's where your power is. He wants you to go and pray a powerless prayer. Hallelujah. Matthew 4.4. 4. Let's go to Matthew 4.4 4 quickly. Matthew 4.4 4 quickly. Am I, am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. But he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Check here. Jesus Christ is telling us something very pro so profound. He's saying, check here, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of what? Of God, not your mouth. What does this mean? When you pray, declaring the word of God, it's like God speaking. Because he did not say, man shall, shall not live by bread alone, but shall live by every word of God that he speaks. No. The moment you release the word of God in prayer, that word is proceeding out of the mouth of God. You change to be you. Because the Bible said, in the beginning was what? Was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was what? God. And nothing that was made that was made without him. Hallelujah. How many of you want to pray? You, you, uh, tell me, don't you, want, don't, don't you want that power that when you are praying, it's like God speaking? Hallelujah. Which demon can enter the place where God is speaking? None. I'm saying to you, Go for the word. Go for the word. Invest your time studying your Bible. Do you know what's happening? What the biggest fear of Satan is Genesis 1.27. Let us make men according to our image, according to our likeness. He knows that the moment man, the man becomes like God, he will speak like God. And when the man speak like God, there is change. Why? We saw it in Genesis 1. And God said, let there be, it was. And God said, let there be, it was. And God said, let the waters from the earth be separated from the waters from the heavens. There was separation. He knows that the moment you begin to release the word, there shall be separation. He will be separated from your life. He will be separated from that which concerns you. He will be separated from your family. He will be separated from your business. He will be separated from your finances. He knows there was the, and God said it's not God praying it's Mr. Tusi but as you release the word of God in the spiritual realm the registry is saying and God said and God said and God said you are registering the word of God and you are matching up with that which has been written concerning you am I talking to someone go for the word go for the word do you want to be strong spiritually? Go for the weight. Hallelujah. First John 2.14. First John 2.14. Be still and know 
that I, I am God. Be still and know that I am God. First John 2.14 I've written to you, fathers, because you've known, you've known him who is from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Hmm. Can you see where your strength is coming from? When the word of God abides in you, what do you do? You overcome the wicked one. In other words... Not when you visit the word. Not when you read the Bible in, in, in case of trouble. Can I please get a verse that can make me feel better? Yeah? A verse that can make you feel better. No, there is no such a verse in the Bible. There is a verse that can make you an overcomer. Hallelujah. There is a verse that can make you overcome the wicked one. So when you abide in the word, that's why, there is a, that's why God said, when he speak to Joshua, he didn't say to Joshua, Moses, now my servant is dead. Please train more soldiers. Make sure that you get new weapons, get more spears and so No. He said, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Okay, can we just go to it, Joshua 1.8? Oh, 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 you know it. Why did God command Joshua that? In the midst of all these things, Joshua was commanded one thing. Let us go to 8. Verse 8, Joshua 1, 8. It said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then it will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Number nine. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. How is the Lord God is with him wherever he goes? When he sticks to the word. He is with God wherever he goes. Do you want to be with God all the time wherever you are? Be ruled by the word of God. Let the word of God reign in your life. Proclaim. Declare the word of God. When you see the situation, proclaim. Declare the word of God. But let me tell you something. You can never proclaim and declare the word of God that you don't know when you see a situation. Hallelujah. When you are feeling hopeless, right? The word builds up hope. Do you want your hope to be built? The word builds up hope. So in other words, you can never say, I'm giving up. People who are filled with the word don't give up. You would rather go to your, to your war room, your closet, and pray until something happens. Hallelujah. Why? Because you know that his word shall not come back to him void. His word shall always accomplish that which is supposed to accomplish and prosper in the thing that he said it to. So why do people who are filled with the word of God lose hope? Why do we get discouraged? No. Discouragement is not your portion. You stand by the word of God. You declare and decree that he who has begun a good work in me shall accomplish it until the day of Jesus Christ. As it is written of me in the volume of books in Psalm 139 verse 16, you said in what God has written about me, this is not it. I reject failure. I reject discouragement. I speak success over my life because the one who called me is successful. He has never failed. From Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation, God has never failed anywhere. 
Hallelujah. Go for the word. You cannot, you, you cannot be hopeless. Yes, if you give an ear to the enemy, he will disrupt the timing of God's words and purpose for your life. We don't get discouraged because God is dead or anything. The one that we give an ear to. Psalm 119, verse 49. Psalm 119, verse 49. Remember the word of your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. Remember the word to your servant. What does God remember to you? Hallelujah. If you want to put God in remembrance about you, what does he remember? The word. The Bible says, when God saw the affliction, of the, each, of the children of Israel in Egypt, why did you remember the covenant that he had with Abraham? What? The weight. What caused the burning bush was the weight. Was re what released the angel to talk to Moses in the burning bush was the word that God remembers. God remembered the word. When the Israelites were hopeless in slavery, God remembered the word that he committed to, to, to Abraham. What is the word that God has committed to you that you remember? That you should remember also. You see, it's important to know your Bible. In your hopelessness, you know, David when he was facing Goliath, he remembered victory. He remembered the time that he killed the bear. He killed the lion. And he realized that, no, 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 no. The same God who made me kill these things is still with me now. So which word will you stand by when you are hopeless? Which, which word did God use to rescue you when you are hopeless? When I was still in the streets, God said to me, if you promise me that you will testify about me when I take you out of here, I will do it. That, that was my covenant with God. I said, God, if you do it, I will testify. Even to this day, I'm still testifying. What word will God remember concerning you? Have your own personal word. My word was Matthew 6.33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added. I stick to that word. Even to this day, is still my word. I say, God, remember this word. You must have your own personal covenant with the word that God has for you. When you pray, you know that even though it looks hopeless, I have a word from God and with God. You cannot afford to be hopeless. You cannot be filled with the word of God and, and give up. You cannot give up on your marriage. You cannot give up on your church. You cannot give up on certain things. You cannot be filled in your, with the word. You know, I, I, love, I, I love what, what, Samuel, what happened to Samuel. When Samuel was still mourning for Saul, God knew that this one, he will continue to mourn forever unless I release the word. He said to Samuel, why do you continue to mourn for Saul whereas I rejected him as a king? It is that word that, that God released to Samuel that made Samuel ordain David as a king. So there should be a word that you rely on. What is your word? 
you are studying. What is the word? Holy Spirit, you promise in a way that you will bring everything into remembrance. That is the word of those who are studying. You are sleeping, you are afraid. Holy Spirit, Psalm 137 says, the angels of the Lord, in Psalm 37 verse 4 says, the angels of the Lord encompass around us and deliver us. What do you do? You sleep, you have peace. It is your word of hope. You become fearless. When you are thinking about your future, you said, Father, you say in a way that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Even though I'm not sure about tomorrow, I'm, I'm assured of your presence in my life. That's why I love the song that, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know, he holds my future. For life is just a living, just because life is worth a living. Just because what? That's what the Bible said. My word is alive, sharper than a double edged sword. So when you say because he lives, you can face tomorrow. You are saying because the word of God is alive, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Be filled with the word. You cannot be filled with the word and be hopeless. It's not possible. You cannot be filled with the word and be discouraged. It's not possible. When you don't feel like doing it, for the sake of the word inside of you, stand up and do it. You will see what God will do for you. God will intervene. As I told that, I could not stand. I was dizzy. I'm not going to lie. But for the sake of the word, God did it. Strengthening me with might by his spirit in my inner man. And I declare that the same spirit that was Christ from the dead dwelt in me and that spirit revitalizes my mortal body. That's my spiritual red bull. You cannot give up on anything in life. Many have given up because of the lack of the word inside of them. They lost hope in that which God has given them. God has given your business. It looks like it's difficult. You give up. No. When the enemy throws things to disrupt the timing of God concerning your business, concerning your marriage, that is the time that you stand up by the word, declare by the word, and you act on the word of God. You don't give up. You don't lose hope. Hence, you pray the word of God. The ministry of the word in prayer aligns you with that which God has preordained for your life before you were created, before you were born. Am I talking to someone? Write this one down in closing. The word of God always connects you to the voice of God. Wow. The word of God always connects you to the voice of God. Do you want, do you want as I said it in the beginning, do you want the voice of God to speak? Go for the word. Even when God speaks to you, he'll speak to you through his word. He'll give you a verse. You'll just wake up, say, but, 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 why, 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 why do I have Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What is happening? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Oh, God is telling me about my need. That which I thought was a need, God is saying, I shall not want. He's giving you assurance that he will guide you 
to your place of provision. He will guide you to the place of your provision. And then you kneel down and pray. Say, Father, you promise in your word that you are my shepherd. I shall not want. I have this need. I am dependent upon you to guide me to my provision and breakthrough. You release the voice of God. And the voice of God guides your spirit man. Your spirit man guides your soul. And your soul guides your body to the right direction. That is the process. That is, that is how the word of God works. Am I talking to someone tonight? Hallelujah. Psalm 29 verse 3. I said in closing, ne? If I say in closing again, just say, Amen, Pastor. God bless you. Don't say, Pastor, said in closing three times. Psalm 29, verse 3. Up to 4. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is what? Powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of what? Majesty. If you can read up to five, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. In other words, it is the voice of the Lord that will break open every closed door and every wall of Jericho before you. Go for, the vo- go for the voice of God. The word. As you pray, don't be voiceless in prayer. How do you become voiceless in prayer? When you're praying outside the word of God. You are voiceless. But the moment you put the word of God in prayer, the voice of the Lord becomes your voice. Am I talking to someone? Can I repeat it? Don't be voiceless in prayer. When you put the word of God in prayer, the voice of the Lord becomes your voice. And it changes manifesting the spiritual realm. Can you stand up? I want you to understand this. In closing, others I'll finish next week. The word connects you to God's presence. When you are praying the word of God, you get connected to God's presence. His will prevails. Because when you are in his presence, nothing else matters. You know, I I taught about this before. The disciples were in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The storm hit their boats. They tried by their own fishermen skills to save themselves. And they realized that no, we are in the presence of Of the word, Jesus Christ. Let us go for the word instead of our skills. It is the word that brings the presence of God who will rebuke the storms in your life. Hallelujah. Can we pray? Father, I thank you that you spoke to us. I thank you, mighty God, that your word connect us to your presence. As we pray your word, your word gives us the voice in the spiritual realm. The void, the, your word lifts up our faith, our faith levels. Father God, I thank you that even tonight, as we are about to embark in prayer of fasting, Teach us, mighty God, to pray your word. Holy Spirit, guide us 
where to go, which way to go for. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to put it to you, child of God. If you don't know your Bible yet, you are shortchanging yourself. Make time for the wait. I'll repeat this. At least, if you are ready to, lead, to read the Bible, read one chapter a day. Build up the habit of reading the Bible, meditating upon the Word of God. That will automatically change your prayer language. You will see the effect and the effectiveness of the ministry of the word in your prayer life. You will never be a voiceless, prayerful person. Hallelujah. Are we together? We are about to give. I'm sure you saw the banking details in the beginning of the broadcast. Those who cannot come to church, use those banking details to transfer what needs to be transferred, your tithe and offering. Soon we're going to introduce a number for cash send because others find it easier to just send e-wallet or cash send. We're going to introduce that number. We just want it to make it easier for you to be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Tune in again on Sunday. And again, tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock, there will be the rebroadcast of the word on YouTube. Tune in and we'll see it. God bless you.